I am here with Sam. Hi. And Dave. Hey. <laughs> and we have been talking today about uh, the importance of your environment when it comes to creative work, uh, both as artists and as uh, anyone who wants to have creative ideas uh, and make things happen. So guys, uh, in one word, what can they look forward to? Expression. Expression? Yep. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Okay, big idea show coming up. Stay tuned. Jennifer Page with Crush there on the Big Idea Show and I am joined by my next two set of guests. Uh, we have Sam Capel. Hello Sam. Hello Lee. Hello. And we have Dave aka El Davo. How's it going? Hello. Good uh, thank you. Hello. Right. Okay guys so I wanted to get you both in. Um, this was partly inspired by seeing the Creative Foundation video that went out last week wasn't it that went out over the weekend. Week, yeah. Yep. Um, and Sam, you're featured in it, aren't you? And so uh, it kind of got me thinking about the environment, the impact and the importance of our creative environment. And we're, both, we're all very lucky here in Folkestone to have what we have, but I wanted to look at that and explore in a little bit more detail why are we lucky? And I guess for anyone out there, be they creative or just exploring ideas creatively in any capacity, what, how we can get the most out of our environment. Um, so, Sam, I'll come to you first. What is it kind of, what do you, why have you chosen to be in Folkestone? But from a creative was, point of view. It was kind of an accident, really. Because okay. I moved back from Brighton, yep. which is a massive creative leap city. And, and I think um, we made the choice to not move back to Dover, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So we did make a choice to live here yep. and for me to work here. And I think the fact that there was affordable spaces to take up and mm. and not work from home, yep. where you're in your PJs, and <laughs> yeah. sitting on the couch procrastinating, yeah, that's what um, I do. It's just a <laughs> it was just a perfect transition, really. Yeah. So I kind of fell into it and haven't really looked back since. Okay, brilliant. And I guess, like you say, it being affordable does is that because it gives you that element to this or that ability to well, you don't, you experiment. Don't, yeah, you don't have to make work don't have to make work to sell yeah so then I I suppose they call that selling out a bit because you're kind of you're you're going with the market and you're going with what people like which is not really the artistic mm. um, I guess it's not an expression of you yeah, yeah expression so for me to have an affordable space it's obviously most of our artists have part-time jobs and things like that to at least afford the the small things and a small part of having rent then forced me to experiment with work mm. and move in different directions or you know you don't have to make work that is sellable yeah you can yeah. experiment it's right perfect really yeah, yeah. yeah. and cheaper okay. than london yeah yeah definitely <laughs> so it's good cool okay and dave what about you you said there um about you kind of you work from home is that right yeah that's right yeah okay and cheaper than a studio yeah definitely <laughs> yeah. and and what is it so what is it about the environment of folks in the community as a whole that works for you as a creator um well i like being part of the uh, creative community because what i missed when i left uni was going into uni every day you'd have like um <coughs> loads of artists around you and I moved back to my parents in Hythe, um, so I'm sort of from the area. But I, I kind of miss that sort of meeting with artists every day or just being around like okay. creative environment. So mm. I thought I have to come to Folkestone and then, you know, you can probably throw yourself into that kind of environment. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a good, a good, good help. Okay, yeah. absolutely cool. And um, we were discussing a bit off air, weren't we? This idea of, um, I guess as an artist, it can be quite easy to um, kind of sit and really think about on your own and be on your own thinking about your ideas, but it being very important to kind of get out and talk to other people and express yeah. it. Do you find it, quite, is the Folkestone community quite good for that? Are you able to bounce ideas off them? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, because I'm, you know, lo there's lots of us doing lots of different things and we have sort of lots of different ideas. So sometimes they can be a help but a lot of time there's a lot of um i don't know i kind of feel a bit lost in uh you know cr creatively in, in what i want to do mm. it's nice to chat to people about ideas but lots of people doing a sort of diverse range of things so okay i don't so it can quite be know how to kind of yeah so what is, it's a bit of a challenge sometimes that you have too many ideas or, or too many people giving you input and oh you should do this you should yeah do that. well i think 
I've always got too many ideas. It's just like we were saying before, how to kind of, which ones to choose and which ones to go with. But yeah, I guess, um, I don't know. I don't feel there's that many people doing sort of uh, specifically what I do, which a lot of do a lot of sort of social commentary through illustrations, through detailed stuff. Yeah. I know there are you know, a couple of other illustrators and that, but we all have sort of different themes. And then people that do paintings and kind of photography, they all have different, um, Sort of objectives in their work so yeah. it's nice to sort of be around that and you can sort of take inspiration from it but I think essentially all the ideas are kind of it can be tough to kind of find original ideas for you to go with okay. um, sort of you know yeah so I guess this is a question for both of you have you found your work directly being influenced by the things that are here in Folkestone you know the sights and sounds and all that kind of stuff or is it a case like you said of trying to separate yourself and not do those things because that maybe is what everyone else is doing well I think like Dave says everyone has their own objectives mm. so I do everything about food and the food industry and you can't not uh, take in your own environment I mean we're lucky that Folkestone has a good restaurant scene and we've got vegan restaurants and and all this kind of thing which I can take into account and put into my work and collaborate with people but in terms of the artistic community supporting each other. I think we just support each other on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. That yeah. we we go to their private views. We say kind of well done on on your work. I don't think we're here to kind of slag each other off or yeah, yeah, yeah. say I don't think that's your best work. <laughs> I think we're all just in the same boat and we're yeah. just trying to make. I mean, being an artist is pretty amazing and to kind of live off work and not have a nine to five job and all this kind of thing so you all just need to support each other yeah good so. absolutely to good statement and um i think we're gonna take a break <coughs> now. we're gonna um have some more music um and we're gonna be cool. back talking about a bit more environment There we go, the Friends theme tune, also known as the Rembrandts, I'll be there for you. Okay, so I am back with Dave, aka El Davo, and Sam Capel. Uh, we are talking about environment, uh, kind of how they create your environment helps and supports you to be creative um, as artists in your cases, but also uh, more generally to think creatively, to think outside the box. So let's go back. Sam, you mentioned something on the last link about. Um, how uh, it's not about you don't feel competitive there isn't a competitive community in Folkestone but how does it affect you is it something that you are you kind of do you find yourself comparing yourself to other people or does it inspire you or does it kind I of think, make yeah, it I think yeah I think we compare it yeah ourselves to, to everybody really like some of my favorite artists include Grace and Perry and it's hard not to kind of follow some of their traits and how they've got into the art world and things like that and been been successful um, but in terms of locally, we're not. I, d I don't feel competitive with anyone else. Yeah. Some people sell the work for a lot more money than me. Some people sell it less. Yeah. You know, obviously there's only a certain amount of people that are going to buy all this artwork up that's kind of sloshing around. And I think it just um, it's it's not like dog eat dog or anything. So if someone like if El Davo sells a nice big pit of painting, you know. I'd, celebrate it with him kind of thing yeah, we were all happy to do it we did the Maidstone art market together recently and that was really good we all sold work I had a lot of friends there they all sold work you can't not be happy for everyone really yeah definitely. is it a case of um do you think by obviously when when one person buys something even though they might buy someone else's work it's generally encouraged that you as a as an industry or as a community mm. it's encouraging more people to buy local yeah because they're supporting the scene, yeah pretty much the artistic scene yeah and if they're buying local then then great and if, if they buy especially local with us lot our prices are a little bit more uh, competitive so they'll probably in a couple of years see an investment on that so I mean that's kind of um, the long, long way to look at it but yeah. but yeah that you know I need to pay rent I need to pay my mortgage mm -hmm. I've got kids now so yeah. All, all got to pay for that but without trying to lose a sense of my artistic um, ideas and freedom and expression integrity, and, and all that yeah. integrity yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's what the community is about though that kind of if community does well then you do well everyone's kind of brought up together 
Mm. It's nice to sort of feel part of something instead of fighting against it. I kind yeah. of, um, I think that's where things go wrong when you kind of just turn against each other as such. It's more help everyone out, they'll help you out. Mm. And, uh, yeah. and is that something you think folks and has it done it in a specific way or has it just happened naturally or has it been manufactured do you think? I think well there is a kind of feeling that it might be manufactured but then within that there's you know like for instance I'm part of the chip shop group mm -hmm. like a small art collective and we'd put on shows and that at the art car boot fair recently um, we had a show a few weeks ago in the Creative Foundation property and it's nice to see other people sort of doing well within that and and sort of, you know, you're just doing stuff for the community, sort of putting artwork out there. And that it feels like something that's like natural that's happened within what might have been a manufactured, you sort of push all these artists into an environment and yeah. say, make work. But, you know, that's kind of, uh, you feel under, under pressure then. Yeah. But when you sort of form your own sort of groups, collectives, friendships uh, yeah. within that, then that's more natural and you can kind of just relax and produce some good work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was talk from the Creative Foundation or some artists, including myself in part of the conversation, maybe getting the foundation to have a, a gallery and okay. run a gallery. Wow, yeah. But I think that might have been a dangerous territory to go down, the fact that they would then be vetting work. Okay. And mm. the fact, yes, it's all been kind of built for us, the foundations, but I think we've, we've built it up mm. and we won't get into talk of gentrification yet or anything, <laughs> but you know, they haven't told me what to do or how to do it. Yeah. And the only galleries in this place are all run by artists and Themselves. and people alike. Yeah. So, you know, if at the end of the day you've got to do it yourself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You definitely. have to push your own artwork, you have to get it in places. The foundation are kind of like landlords, mm -hmm. but then again they put on all sorts of shows and you know they obviously the arts with me and Dave don't just stick at kind of drawing and painting and collaging and all that mm. there's film and food yeah and so I guess mm. it, it sounds like you've had you very much had authority over your work and authority over how you get it out there and what it's all about in every sense um, so would you say is that one of the, the, the underpinning things maybe that has made Folkestone as an environment really really work that authority, that, the balance of support, at a, like you said, at ground level foundations, but it's up to you guys now, you've got to build it yourself. Absolutely, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm. I was listening to a Grayson Perry lecture recently and he just said, you know, just give artists the space and they will, they will do good. Do okay. you know what I mean? They yeah. will just let it's them like get plant, on with plant it. Plant a seed, just water it and then let it kind of flourish and yeah. it might need that sort of nurturing to an extent, but not too much sort of interference, let it kind okay. of grow. Like. Yeah. Really nice. Okay, that's a really nice note to finish on. Um, Good analogy there, Dave. Oh, yeah, thank definitely. You. Don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Right, okay, we're going to have some music now. Take that with New Day. So you are listening to The Big Idea Show on 105.9 Academy FM Folkestone and this afternoon we are having a discussion around environment and the importance of your environment uh, both to be creative in an artistic sense but also in a kind of having ideas and being in a creative community. I am joined still in the studio by Dave El Davo. Hello. Hello. Still Hello. here. Still here. And Sam Capel. Hello. Still here. Right. Good. Good. Check. Check. I still have two guests. Um, right, so yeah, we've been talking about this and this was all inspired by the Creative Foundation video that came out uh, last week and it kind of got me thinking about what is it that's so special? We, we all feel this, folks has got something really great going on, but what is it? Um, we've kind of explored it a bit in terms of them giving the space um, for which artists can then take responsibility for making it happen for themselves. But I wanted to touch on now uh, the, the more people element, the community element. Um, maybe starting this discussion a little bit around this balance of being an introvert and an extrovert and as an artist you kind of end up being both right like introvert mm. maybe when you create the work but extrovert because you're expressing that idea to the world um how do you guys feel that balance between do, do you come up with ideas on your own and you kind of you know go that, that stereotypical thing of an artist kind of pondering over, days and days over their ideas or do you like to get out and talk about them and have ideas you know in the in the in your environment out there do you want to start, Dave? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with this. Um, well, I, I'm well-known recluse, 
I spend days and days in my, in my flat, which is my studio, uh, my living room. I don't invite people around to do the social aspect of, you know, cups of tea. It's just purely <laughs> a studio now. No. Yeah. <laughs> so I just sort of lock myself away in there and just work, 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 just getting everything out. And then I kind of look a bit like, um, who's that guy from the film? Um, Tom Hanks on there. Uh, what's it called? The, oh. the way he's lost on the island. Oh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I know the one. Everyone's screaming at the, anyway, at the radio right so now. I, we all uh, know it, yep, on the island. That one, yep, yeah, you got it right, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I look like him and I come out and I sort of am so kind of, uh, you know, just lost in, you know, I can't even string a sentence together. Yeah. I'm like now actually. <laughs> and yeah, so I've sort of put everything I have into my work and then I go outside and I sort of start interacting with just, you know, human life again, society and sort of seeing friends. But then that's where I then kind of transform into the, the extrovert. I want to tell people about what I've been doing or my next ideas and that kind of, but I think there's a, there's a balance which I haven't got. I need to kind of, you know, get out every day and speak to people and, you know, yeah. more frequently to give them updates on what I'm doing and that. Yeah, and do you find giving those updates helps you solidify the ideas or is it more of a, just an excitement and just having to kind of get it out? I think, yeah, I think it helps, um, like I was saying before, with when you, you talk about an idea, it isn't necessarily for the other person's benefit. Yeah. You can probably see on their face sometimes, with them. <laughs> you probably really don't want to hear it. But it's more for your benefit and just sort of saying it. Sometimes they might engage with you and they might enjoy the idea. They will kind of throw some ideas back and sort of more along the lines of what you're going to be doing anyway. But yeah, so I think it, it does help, um, you know, share ideas and uh, okay. you can bounce off people. Yeah. You can kind of see if they really hate your idea and then you just have to, you're on your own there, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, it gives you that feedback to then either if they're like, oh my God, that sounds amazing, you get loads of motivation to then go back and keep working, yeah. or if they're not, if they don't really get it, I guess then you have that tough decision of do you keep yeah. going or do you go, oh, maybe that's not quite going to hit home. But yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I normally think they just haven't got the idea, I haven't sort of expressed it enough. I always think it's not the perfect idea. That's, yeah. I will take some of their kind of opinions on board, but until I can actually show them sketches of what I mean and you can they can see the final piece kind of materializing yeah like I showed a piece recently um uh, about a, a snail illustration I did and the very first sketch was absolutely awful and that's normally the one I send to a client like the preliminary sketch yeah this is what I'm going to be doing for you and they're kind of horrified and then I have to sort of work a bit more and develop it until it's almost finished and then they can say oh yeah I like that now yeah but it's kind of a struggle to you know get that get those thoughts onto paper or even verbalize them and get them to get on the same wavelength so yeah okay so it's and, tricky and Sam what about you because uh, um, Dave touched on something there around this idea of I guess as artists you although we're talking about talking about your ideas and sharing your ideas I guess the best way for you guys to sh as both as artists to share your ideas is visually so what's the balance for you in terms of talking and I think I've drawing? always been oops easy Dave <laughs> relatively shy um, in I suppose in artistic ways of just, what, just kind expressing of expressing yourself yeah. and going ta-da this okay. is this is me that you know do you like it or not it's kind of if someone doesn't like it it's, it's kind of a kick in the teeth but mm. but with art for me I don't get that okay that's completely different it's it's when you like wear clothes or when you're growing up and things like that but with art the best way I can express myself and because I don't think I'm the best articulate person I find putting work out there is the best way I can express my okay. ideas yeah. and not necessarily my ideas on, on life and all that, but my ideas about food and things. And, um, so, so I guess, I j yeah. so I guess going, so we, we, I guess we're talking about sharing our ideas from the point of view of helping us and Dave mentioned it, kind of sharing it to help it become a bit clearer and you share it with someone else for you. Is there a way, I guess maybe if it's not about always verbalising your idea, how can we express that and get feedback um, from people in other ways? Is it, as Dave said, putting out kind of little sketches, but then you've got that concern of, yeah, but it's not fully formed yet, mm. is it? I guess that's a question for both of you. And it's the big artist I dilemma. I suppose the quickest way is putting it on Instagram or social media and yeah. getting likes, but then if you don't get any likes, then it's like, oh, why, why don't they like it? Or maybe they've not seen it or something. Devastating. Yeah. So you need that validation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I agree with Dave when you get out of your slumber and go and 
down the pub and see your mates and talk about your art and things like that. Yeah. That's the best place, I think. Not even, you know, it mm. sounds like a joke, but go out, go out and really have a few informal. drinks yeah. just with friends and don't, don't even think of it as a work as such. Just go and have fun and relax and kind of be natural and, okay. and things just flow, especially after a few drinks and, you know, and then it gets oh, to a like, pop, yeah, yeah a fizzy days. pop and then, oh. you know, and you're walking home with someone like, you know, stumbling home at six in the morning. <laughs> That's the best ideas That's come out then, yeah. Okay, absolutely. And then you, and then you fall asleep. Forget yeah. <laughs> have that notebook to yeah, hand. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, we're going to have to go for some more music. Now we're going to have some Stevie Wonder and Superstition and then we'll be back with the guys. The Big Idea Show, uh, we have just gone, uh, about just gone half past 12 here, and Dave and Sam, um, following up on the last discussion we had, we were talking about this idea of uh, kind of putting things out on Instagram, getting likes, but also being able to be relaxed with our ideas. I want to pitch you an idea right now. Um, it's kind of a combined idea that me and Jim Lockie have had. I want to see what you think. It's called uh, Dragon's Dump, and basically it's, you come, it's for creative, and it's, for visual creatives, but also anyone who's got an idea, to come and essentially dump their bad, their good and their bad ideas. That kind of dump. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with the idea that, like you said, you know, if you don't know, if you're, you've got a visual idea and you put it out on Instagram, and if oh my god, if no one likes it, does that mean no one likes it and it's rubbish, or is it just you caught people on a bad day and, and stuff like that? And the idea is that you could dump all your ideas and get instant feedback and then clear some of them out and then like we talked about before you know when you have loads of ideas hmm. and you don't know which one to kind of start with or, or where to okay. pick up yeah, yeah yeah how does that idea sound for you not too bad okay not too bad would it be this is, see this is the idea now yeah. i'm just so in terms of feedback yeah who's given the feedback the, the listeners or the yeah the audience well it would okay. be probably a live event oh, okay and so you can and it and it's kind of to make I, light of you know when we get stuck in those creative yeah. ideas to kind of go oh what do you think i don't know anymore because we get caught up in it i suppose it's a bit like what threads are doing at the moment with the crits okay. they're like really good and you appear to be a basis but for me i don't know for me just spontaneously i would probably say no okay because i don't think i'm great at articulating my ideas yeah and i'm more of uh just get on with the idea yeah you can and actually finish the piece okay and then if it's rubbish i'll put it at the back of the studio <laughs> and paint okay. on it over it or yeah. whatever that's the kind of you yeah. can show them that instagram picture even of or just like this yeah, is a, do a that. work in progress or like they do at the crits they say bring work along with you so yeah. okay that could maybe expand into a bigger idea so okay okay this is good to know all right could, and, yeah. and dave what do you think i don't know uh i'm kind of like sam with that you know i don't always Put the work out. I'd, I'd rather just do it, sort of yeah. finish it, and um, you know, and see how it's kind of received. Okay. But I think with in terms of getting feedback from people, um, most of the time, a lot of what I do is positive because I try to keep that kind of artistic integrity and keep it along the same sort of theme for what I'm doing. So people kind of know what to expect, yeah. and they can see the evolution of ideas through my my um, most recent pieces. Um, it's when I do something that might be completely different, which occasionally I'll sort of, you know, do some kind of sculpture thing or do uh, painting or something else. And then you kind of get a different crowd, but I don't want to sort okay. of alienate the people who followed me because they like my illustration work. Mm. I need to kind of keep on doing that and keep that consistency. Okay. But occasionally I do sort of like to just experiment and play with new stuff. And um, sometimes people are like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, just having fun here, come on. Yeah, chance to experiment. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, we're opening out into a whole other discussion. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to, we're kind of... be here for hours. Yeah, I, I know, think. right? So um, we're going to leave. have to leave it there, unfortunately, but maybe we'll come back and we'll get you guys in for another discussion yeah, sure. around um, sounds good. stuff along these sorts of lines, about branding. I think it sounds like your personal brand in terms of your creativity. Yeah. But, um, okay, for now, I'm going to stop talking and uh, let the listeners have some music. Um, so Dave, a.k.a. Eldero, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And Sam, a.k.a. Sam Capel, <laughs> thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. It's been a great chat on environments. This is the Big Ideas Show, and you've got uh, Ello with Turn to Stone.